All right, we're going to continue to work on some lateral stabilization and balance exercises, marrying things like the short foot activation, the single leg balance, but also that lateral stability. So overlooked in our uniplanar A to P robotic world. And I'm a runner, so I know all about the A to P, but we do so much of it and we forget about what enables us to do this pain free. It's that lateral stabilization, it's that side to side movement. If you're talking about unstable ankles, even stiff ankles, if you're talking about plantar fasciitis, shin splints, Achilles tendonitis, things like that, even going up the chain, knee pain, things like that, what we're going to do is we're going to engage in some lateral movement. And in doing so, and in combining these movements right here, we're actually activating certain muscles of the lower leg. We hear phrases like supination and pronation all the time, and then we get put in a different shoe or an orthotic. Well, how about understanding what those muscles are and what those muscles do, and then try to target them, strengthen them, mobilize them, and have them have enough tension and activation from the brain when necessary in order to stabilize without some foreign device that just further atrophies those muscles. In doing these two motions, we're going to activate the supinators, activate the pronators. One direction will be activating the supinator cocentrically while eccentrically loading the pronator and vice versa for the other. If you know about muscle contraction and loading it, we're getting the best of both worlds there with this lateral movement right there. You see, if you keep your foot in that supinated position and you never pronate and you're always on the outside right there, you can check the bottom of your shoe. You might have that wear pattern just on the outside. You're creating a rigid, rigid lever and you're going to pound, impact, pound the ground and that's bad for your body. That's bad for your ankles, your knees, your hips, your back, all the way up. Flip side, if you don't supinate and you roll all the way in and you notice the wear pattern all the way on the inside of the foot and hardly anything on that knife edge, now you're creating more torque and more grab every time and you're twisting the plantar fascia and you're twisting the Achilles tendonitis and you're creating issues of instability right there. You want to find a good marriage between the two and this is one way to start to engage those muscles to get it. Check the bottom of your shoe, you can check it out. You should see a little bit of wear pattern on that outside of the shoe, maybe around mid-range, getting to that, the toe. You should see more on that big toe because essentially you want to have that big toe on the ground and drive it into the ground. So let's go to the demonstration. So we're going to stand up right here. We get into this position and we're just going to go side to side. Easy as can be. We talked about short foot activation in the past. You can double back and check it out for a review. Short foot activation. Got my right foot on the ground. My left foot's up. Because I'm activated, I can bring this up. I have a stable base. Remember, short foot activation turns on your pelvic floor just by driving that big toe into the ground, the fascial connections, I love it. That also connects to your diaphragm. So now we're activating 360 degrees of the core. Think about this stuff when you do it and it'll make sense. Now I have a stable base. What we're gonna do is just go side to side. So we go to the left and you can start just by stepping first, even just by stepping. So you're good, you got a single leg balance now? How about we step? Step to the side, re-engage. Step to the side, re-engage. The point being, when I step to the side, I want to now engage this, short foot activation. The more and more you do it, the more and more it becomes second nature. Short foot activation, pelvic, core, diaphragm, and I'm good to go, I'm stable, I'm stable and I'm ready to go. I'm doing a little Irish river dance here. And then we go back the other direction, stable. Step, stop from over supinating, and grab the ground with your foot. And then back to the other side. As you get better at that, you can then add a little hop to it, a little jump. So then hop, you see? A little bit more supination, putting myself on the spot right here, but I grab it. You grab it back in. You go back the other direction. I don't, we don't want to hop back and forth. This is a good exercise in itself, just like the lateral leaps going side to side. But we don't, what we want to do is end the momentum. We want to get in this position, side, hop, and now stop. Stop momentum. Stop momentum so you can stop right here. Take momentum out of the equation. Engage the foot, stability's there. Now I'm going back the other direction. Again, I stop momentum, stability's here. You can even do a little dance if you want to show that you got it, and then go back over to the other side. Short foot activation, driven into the ground. I have stability right there. Practice with that, side to side. Remember, start out, just step. Start out, just step. And not step, rock momentum. Step, stop. You can even then incorporate this. Leg forward, leg back, to show I've stopped the lateral movement. Stop the lateral movement, and now I'm in a firm position. Step. I've stopped the lateral movement, flexion, extension. Same thing, side to side, practice those. As you get better at that, 
you can add a little leap to it. Add a little bit of a leap to it and get, get control, get stability. Take it into the next level. Now we're going to have different contractions, different forces on the supinators versus the pronators. Remember, pronator, supinator. We want good balance of them for good ankle stability, but also to balance that supination pronation for optimal foot biomechanics. This one's a little bit trickier, but again, we want to challenge the brain. So now I'm going to come over, I'm going to bring this lead foot in front and stop. In front and stop. In front and stop. So you check it out. I'm in this position, across, and I stop. You can see now we're loading the pronators. Now we're collapsing in, so we got to stop that. we got to have those supinators grab it to stop it. And we got to have those pronators load under tension, but also stop it as well. I go across the other way and stop it. Stop it. Much more difficult than the traditional lateral steps, but it is doable. In this position, across the front, and I stop. Good, good. Now this one's coming that way. Across the front, and I stop. Stable position, cross it up, and there you go. Work on these, even if it's an unfamiliar movement. We're really, really digging in, getting creative, getting imaginative with the lateral movements and the different ways we can engage the supinators, the pronators, the IT band, the abductors, the adductors, the whole thing to create stable bases to do whatever we want, especially in a A to P uniplanar dominant world. Work on those side movements. Take your time with it. Try to build on it and create a stronger, more stable, more powerful you.